Okay, this is your practice all activity from standard vertex, factored, and graph. Um, even if you don't have a graphing calculator, you're going to be fine because you're going to use all of these methods to be able to get to one from the other or one to another. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the second one with you because it's a little bit more difficult. It's still going. Notice how it's from standard and then you go all to all of those forms. The second one is still from standard to all of those forms. It's just a little bit more complicated. Now, standard form is already done for you. Okay, so this here would be our answer. <clears throat> so let me box it. So that's my standard form. I'm going to go ahead and go from standard to vertex or standard to factored. It really does not matter. Um, it's whatever your preference. I'm going to go ahead and go from standard to vertex because that's something we've been learning with the last few days. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this as two, negative 2x two squared minus 4x plus 6. Remember, this is where you look at the first two and you ask yourself, is there anything you can factor out that is not going to take away that x squared? And you can actually factor out a negative 2. You have to take out that negative part. You cannot leave it in there. So x squared plus 2x plus 6. Now remember that this is your a, b, c. Now this is a, b, and c. So your b is now a 2. So you're going to take half of 2. Oops. So you're going to take half of 2. And then you're going to divide it by 2 and then square it. So I'm going to do that off to the side here. So half of 2 and then square it. That's going to give you a 1. That's the number we're working with. So I'm going to be left with negative 2x squared plus 2x plus 1 plus 6. Now remember you factored out that 2. So that negative 2 times that 1 that you just used, that's a negative 2. The opposite is going to be a positive 2. So now I'm going to be left with um, negative 2 and then your trinomial and then whatever is outside. Now remember this is your a is equal to 1. That's your goal. So 1 times 1 gives you 1 but also what gives you 2. So that's going to be 1 and 1. So I'm going to go ahead and do the next one. So I'm going to be left with negative 2 x plus 1 and x plus 1 plus 8. Remember that when these are looking the same, you're ki you're on the right track. And then finally, negative 2 x plus 1 squared plus 8. So this here is your vertex form. However, you're going to want to identify your vertex and your axis from here um, because that's going to help you with your graph. So I'm going to go ahead and put that my vertex is negative 1 and 8 and the axis will be negative 1. So these are all part of the answers. Okay. So you'll see why we're going to use that in a little bit. Now let's move on to factored form. Now I'm going to go from standard to factored. Now remember factored form, that's where you look at your, if it's a perfect square or if you have square root method or factored method, all of that stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this negative 2x squared minus 4x plus 6. If you look here, your a is actually a less than 1, which means that you have to factor something else to get one here. Now I'm going to take out a negative 2. I'm not just going to take out a 2 because then that will leave this as a negative and you are not allowed to do that. So I'm going to take out a negative 2. x squared plus 2x minus 3. So now that I've done that, my a is finally a 1. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. What times what gives me negative 3 but also a positive 2? So this should all just be um, just refreshing your memory on factoring. So I'm going to be left with x plus 3 and x minus 1. That's going to give me negative 3, but it's also going to give me a positive 2. Now, once I've done that, I can go ahead and solve. So I'm going to go ahead and split these up. Whoops, too big. Split these up. Negative 2 cannot equal 0. So x is negative 3 and x is a positive 1. So your answers here are negative 3 and positive 1. So these are my final answers. So now that I've done all of that, I'm going to use everything that I have to be able to graph even though I don't have a graphing calculator. Remember your x values? I told you that these are your solutions, your x-intercepts, your zeros, your um, and your roots. So if I look here, I'm going to actually graph these and I'm going to change the color to something we can see. 
So this is at x equals negative 3 and at x equals 1. So my x equals 1 is right here because 1 comma 0. And my x equals negative 3 is actually 1, 2, 3. It's right here. So that's negative 3. Um, and then that's 1. Now, my, uh, my vertex of this graph is actually at negative 1 and 8. So I'm going to go ahead and go to negative 1 and then 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Oops, not there. So this is where the top of the graph is. Okay, so that's your vertex. This is actually a maximum. Now, now that I have my roots, my zeros here, and my vertex, it's going to tell me where my, how my graph is going to look from here. So from here, you're just going to go ahead and connect it, and I'll change the color so you guys can see. So your graph should look something like this, and I'll trace over it right now. Okay, so this is what your graph should look like once you have everything. So again, you should not use your graphing calculator because you need to give me the exact vertex and the exact zeros here. All right. Okay, now let's go ahead and move on. Um, I'm going to do the second one with you. I'm actually going to do three complete ones with you and then you're going to move on to the other three. So now from here. Notice how we started off with standard and then I went to vertex and then I went to factored and then I used my factored and vertex to get my graph. So now this way, I actually have vertex form where I'm starting. Now this is already my answer. However, I'm still missing the vertex. The vertex is going to be positive seven and positive one. The axis is going to be seven. So this is part of your answer. You need to include it. Okay, so that's going to help me with my graph later on. So now from here, I'm going to go ahead and go from vertex to standard. So remember that when you have x minus 7 squared, you have two of those. So I'm going to rewrite this as negative and then x minus 7, x minus 7 plus 1. Okay. So that negative is coming from the negative here. I'm going to go ahead and ignore that negative for right now. And I'm going to FOIL everything inside the parentheses. So I'm going to put x squared and then minus 7x minus 7x plus 49. Let me rewrite this so I have more room. So x squared minus... 7x minus 7x plus 49. And I'm going to go back to my blue. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and simplify this. x squared minus 14x plus 49. Notice how I'm leaving that 1 on the outside. Now I'm going to go ahead and distribute this 1 here, negative 1. So this is going to give me negative x squared. And let me change the color. So negative x squared plus 14x minus 49, and then I'm going to bring down that one. If you notice, you can still combine like terms. So this is actually my standard form. Okay, so I had to go from vertex to standard. Now that I have my standard, I'm going to go ahead and do factored form. Okay, I'm not going to go from vertex to factored because... Um, in order to go from vertex to factored, you actually have to go to standard first. If you notice, that's what we did earlier. I went from standard to vertex and then standard to factored. I never jumped from vertex to factored. So now I'm going to go ahead and use that same one. So negative x squared plus 14x minus 48. Now I'm going to go ahead and factor this. My a here is a negative 1 that's also less than 1. So I'm going to factor something out. I need to take their GCF out of everything. Now if you look at this here we actually have a GCF of negative 1, okay? So I'm going to take out that negative 1. So let's go ahead and factor out our GCF. Remember, it has to be a negative 1. You are not allowed to have that as a negative there. So I'm going to be left with x squared minus 14x plus 48 because I'm factoring out that negative 1. Now that I'm left here, my a is equal to 1 finally, so what times what gives me 48, but also a negative 14. So we're going to have 6 times 8. So x minus 
6 and x minus 8 because that gives you a positive 48 but also a negative 14. Now that I've done this, I'm going to go ahead and solve by setting it equal to 0. So negative 1 does not equal 0. x equals 6 and x equals 8. My answer here is between 6 and 8. Or sorry, not between, but it's, it's going to be 6 and 8. So now that I have my x values, remember these are your zeros, your x-intercepts, your solutions, your roots. So I'm going to go ahead and plot these. So at x equals 6 and 8. So I have 1, 2, 3. Whoops. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then 8 is here. Now my vertex is 7, 1. So 7, 1. And it's going down. The reason I know it's going down is because all of these have a negative. Okay, so all of them are negative. I know it's going down just like earlier. Negative, negative, negative. And it went down. So now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and connect them. So your graph should look something like this. So again, I made sure I graphed my zeros and then my vertex and then you're done. Okay, I'm going to do one more with you and then you guys are going to do the other ones on your own. I'm going to go ahead and erase this. So if you need to pause it, copy it down. All right, the last one I am going to do is actually the last one on your paper. So I did one already where you guys were going from standard form and then you converted to everything else and then you went from vertex form and converted to everything else. Now I'm actually gonna give start off where if I had something in factor form already. So this here, this is factored form. I'm gonna rewrite it differently so that it looks more familiar to you guys. This is factored form here. I'm going to go ahead and set it equal to 0 and find my solutions. Now, negative 1 cannot equal 0. x is going to be negative 4. x is going to be negative 4. Notice how you only have one solution here, which is negative 4. And we'll come back to that in a little bit. So now, from factored form, I'm going to go ahead and go from factor to standard. So we've gone over this. I've told you that whenever you have something like x plus 4 squared, that means you have two of them. So negative x plus 4 squared, that just means you have two of them. So I'm going to write them out this way. And then you're going to FOIL. I'm going to leave the negative towards the end. x squared plus 4x plus 4x plus 16. I'm going to go ahead and combine like terms. Now I'm going to distribute that negative. And then this is your standard form. So now from standard form, I'm going to go to vertex form. So I'm going to rewrite it. So negative x squared minus 8x minus 16. I'm going to go ahead and see if there's anything I can factor out. Now I can factor out a negative here, a negative 1, and I'm going to want to show that. Now I'm not going to factor out the x squared or the x because it's going to mess up things up for me. So I'm going to leave it like this. So now your b is a positive 8 this time. So take half of that, square it, you're left with 16. That's what I'm going to be dealing with. So negative 1, and I'll change the color. Negative 1, x squared plus 8x plus 16 minus 16. Now negative 1 times 16 is going to be negative 16. The opposite is going to be positive 16. So now I'm going to be left with negative 1. And then you have to figure out, okay, 1, a is equal to 1, 1 times 16 is 16, what times what gives me 16, but also adds up to 8, and that's 4. So x plus 4 and x plus 4. Remember, these have to be the same, otherwise you're going to do them wrong. It's wrong already because you need vertex form. And then these here cancel out to 0. You don't have to write it, so I'm not going to write it down because I don't need it. So I'm going to be left with negative 1, x plus 4 squared. Okay, now notice how this looks a lot like this one. That's because they're special cases. You never, sometimes you can't tell when they are special cases, which means that you're going to kind of be stuck writing everything out until you can find a way to determine them. So now you still need to give me the vertex. So that's going to be negative 4. 
and zero. Zero is on the outside here. Remember, it's there. You just don't see it. And then the axis is going to be negative four. So this is part of your solution. So remember, you have to use the factored form solutions and the vertex to be able to find out your graph. So negative four. So I'm going to put negative four here for x. Remember, that's your zeros, your x-intercepts, your roots, your solutions. So one, two, three, four. That's my negative four there. This is the one that has one solution, just so we're clear in case you're wondering why is there no two answers. That's because it's only going to touch the intersect one time, as opposed to the previous ones we did. Those were actually two solutions because it was touching the x-intercept two times. This one is only touching it one time. Now, your vertex is also the same point. So this is not only your solution, but it's also your vertex, which is happens to be the maximum. Now I'm going to go ahead and... It's just a quick sketch, and then this is your graph. Again, this is your graph without needing a graphing calculator. Okay, and this is what we have a one solution with a maximum. A maximum point. Um, I didn't do the other ones for the other two, so make sure you tell me the other two are so two solutions and a maximum point as well. Now this one is going down because that's a negative, that's a negative, and that's a negative. Okay, so I've done three for you. You're gonna do the next three. Um, I am gonna give you the answers to them, but obviously I'm not gonna give you the work. I need to see 100% of the work for everything. I'm not gonna give you the graph answers though because you should be able to graph them knowing your correct solutions for your x under factored form and your correct vertex. So again, I'll give you the answers, but I still need to see your work. All right, go ahead and get started. Finish that up.